Schizophrenia is a functional mental disorder, which means it's a result of impaired brain function rather than a structural problem with the brain. It affects around 1% of the population, or 1 in 100 individuals. There is no special test that can diagnose schizophrenia, which makes it a clinical diagnosis. In other words, it's diagnosed based on a patient's symptoms, which we can think of as either positive or negative symptoms. Positive symptoms are those that are additional to what someone might experience without a mental disorder. Hallucinations are a common positive symptom experienced by patients with schizophrenia, where individuals will have sensory experiences of things that do not exist in the reality of others. For example, seeing things or hearing sounds that are not objectively there. The commonest form of hallucination in schizophrenia is third-person auditory hallucinations. This means someone may hear someone speaking about them. These auditory hallucinations are often saying negative things, or they can give a running commentary of their actions. Delusions are another positive symptom. This is where someone has an unshakable belief about something that is categorically untrue. In schizophrenia, delusions are often based on lack of control, where someone may believe an individual is controlling their mind or body. They're also commonly based on paranoia, for example, believing that someone is constantly watching them. Thought disorder refers to cognitive dysfunction that affects the way an individual perceives their own thoughts, or how they communicate them with others. Common examples within schizophrenia are thought insertion and withdrawal, where individuals have the perception that people are placing thoughts into their mind, or removing them, respectively. Thought echo is another example where someone's thoughts appear as though they're being spoken out loud shortly after they think them. And thought broadcasting, where someone has the perception that others can hear their thoughts. Catatonia is a syndrome of abnormal movements and behaviour associated with severe mental illness. There are many subtypes of catatonia, but one way in which it can present is through patients spending prolonged periods of time sitting or standing in the same position, with no movement. Negative symptoms are mental attributes that are lacking, which are usually present in those not experiencing mental disorder, including apathy, which is a lack of interest or feeling, paucity of speech, and blunt effect, which is when someone does not display normal emotional behaviour in emotional provoking situations. For example, not laughing at something they would otherwise find funny, or not showing sadness at something which would usually provoke sadness. The ICD-10 states that to make a diagnosis, one of the core symptoms must be present, which are hallucinations, delusions, or thought disorder, or that two of the non-core symptoms should be present. These symptoms must also be present for at least one month, and not be due to other causes of psychosis, such as drug intoxication or delirium. Before we move on, I want to highlight the importance of performing a risk assessment for patients with mental health difficulties. It's essential to assess the risk of any patient presenting with psychiatric illness. Patients can be a risk to themselves, pose a risk to others, and be vulnerable of risk from others. So taking a psychiatric history should therefore always include questions around these three headings. Schizophrenia remains a hugely stigmatised and misunderstood illness. This may be a result of lack of education about mental illness as part of school curriculums. It's also perpetuated by the portrayal of mental illness in the media, for example, sensationalised news headlines and Hollywood movies. Some stigma is also generated from a fear of violence of people with schizophrenia. However, individuals who have schizophrenia are 14 times more likely to be victims of violence rather than perpetrators of violence, and most violent crimes are committed by those without schizophrenia. What's it like to have schizophrenia? Here are some first-hand perspectives, which I hope would break down some of the stigma. I have never been violent, and I don't have a split personality, but that's what society sees. I was terrified of what was happening to me, so I stole a car to get away. I was arrested for this and put in jail. Sometimes I hear one or two voices. They tell me I'm a disgrace to my family. So, what causes schizophrenia? As with most mental illness, the exact pathophysiology 
is not completely understood, but one of the leading theories on its cause is that of abnormalities in the activity of neurotransmitters, for example, high dopamine in the brain. This theory is backed up by the fact that most successful medications for treating schizophrenia work by reducing the effect of dopamine. Interestingly, medications used to treat Parkinson's disease mostly work by increasing the effects of dopamine and therefore a side effect of these drugs is psychosis. High serotonin and low glutamine are other neurotransmitter abnormalities that seem to be associated with it. Looking at epidemiology, schizophrenia is present in around 1 in 100 individuals. It is also equally present in males and females, although males are more likely to have higher severity of symptoms. One risk for developing schizophrenia is family history. In fact, an identical twin has a 46% chance of developing schizophrenia if their twin is also affected. Use of cannabis, particularly in adolescence, is also associated with an increased risk in developing it. Complications during pregnancy and childbirth, as well as winter births, also increase the risk. The reason for this is unclear, but it's theorised that there could be a link between schizophrenia and abnormalities in brain development a lot of which happens in utero and in neonates. When looking at management of psychiatric conditions, it's useful to split them into biological, psychological and social therapies. Biological includes medications. In schizophrenia, we use antipsychotics. First generation antipsychotics are some of the first medications identified for this, and they work by inhibiting dopamine 2 receptors, but typically cause a range of unpleasant side effects. Second generation antipsychotics are more specific for the type of dopamine receptor they block, so theoretically produce less side effects, thus are more commonly used as first line treatment for schizophrenia. Psychological management involves the use of talking therapies, such as cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT, where the aim is to alter the way in which people think and behave in situations that are usually problematic for them. Family intervention and psychoeducation are also both proven at being useful in the holistic management of schizophrenia. Social interventions are also important, for example, having social workers' input or having support with housing. Thanks for watching, and feel free to check out my other videos on psychiatry.